to Supervisor Spotlight. This is Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor, here in the studios of Long Island News Radio at our wonderful Islip MacArthur Airport. And in the studio with us today, we have the guru of economic development, not only in the town of Islip or the county of Suffolk, but across the state. And that's Bill Mannix. Bill, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. Pleasure to be here. He's, I'm, he's I'm, getting I'm, a little red, you yes, know. Uh, <laughs> if you I have that Irish skin. Yeah, you can't see it on the radio, but uh, <laughs> it shows whenever I get a little embarrassed. But yes. uh, I, I, I'm. You've been doing it a long time. I'm happy for the. The phrase, um, you know, it's better guru is better than what I heard last week. Somebody mistakenly called me infamous, and I'm not um, sure they knew the name of the, the, the meaning of the word. Well, <laughs> it can go either way. But whatever, you, you are known for your economic development prowess, and we're really very proud of the fact that you're with us at the, t- at the town and have been for many, many years. And uh, it's, it's just remarkable what uh, has been accomplished under your tutelage all of these years, and uh, you have every right to be proud. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I had my 38th anniversary with the town at the beginning of May. That's amazing. Yeah. And so tell everyone how you started, because I think it's a great uh, lesson for kids thinking about getting involved in government, you know, and you just you never, know you you never know where you're going to land or yeah. where you're going to wind up. Yeah, I, um, I, I actually, I owe it all to my wife. Uh, who uh, who said uh, upon my putting an engagement ring on her on her finger, um, I, I had a college education. I had uh, trained to be a, a teacher, and um, I, I decided uh, very right after my student teaching that that was not the path I wanted to follow. I, I was working construction. We got engaged, and she said, "Now you're going to have to go out and get a real, a real job. job. <laughs> Use that college education." So, um, and she even. She even found the listing in Newsday. So I started with the Suffolk County Executive's Office of Intergovernmental Relations. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew nothing about what um, what what was involved, but um, it was a good fit for me. I had great, great bosses over there. It was during the John Klein administration oh, sure. and then into uh, Peter Kohalan administration. And um, it was a very, very um, pleasant uh, and and fruitful working in uh, yeah. you know situation for me and actually I learned a great deal there in 3 years um but uh it didn't pay much and uh what happened was a lot of people at that time were flowing out of Islip up to the county ranks because mm-hmm. Peter Cowan, after right, being supervisor of Islip, Islip mm-hmm. uh, moved over to, uh, got elected as uh, county executive. So that left a lot of open positions in Islip Town, and I was able to secure one of those. And that's how it all started. In so the, what in was the your office. first position in Islip it Town? It was a grants analyst in the um, supervisor's office of management services oh, okay. doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist but anymore. essentially, the three of us uh, back then, myself, George Gatta, Mary Reamer Fink, uh, we were the analysts for the supervisor's office, and we did studies for the supervisor. Uh, we ran some some programs, did a lot of writing for uh, for the supervisor. So again, it was a great learning. Environment. Well, you know, you starting, you know, with John Klein, Peter Cahallan, these are both people that I've been acquainted with over the years, but uh, epitomize, you know, wanting to mentor. You know, back then, I don't know that we looked at them as mentors, but they naturally were, you know, bringing young, someone young along, you know, into government yeah. because they both had a passion for government. Yes, that's very true. And they were both very, very brilliant men. I'll never forget, I always tell this story about the first time I actually met Peter Kohalan face to face. I was walking him from building to building at Suffolk Community College for an event that we were holding. And so I was his guide. And he said, Bill Mannix, are you any relation to the Mannixes who lived at 15 Alfan Drive in Sayville? And I was speechless because I said, how did he know my parents' exact address? Yeah, yeah. And it turns out, because everyone knows, well, a lot of people know he had somewhat of a photographic memory. Yes. And he was our summer mailman. Oh, so wow. So he remembered our exact I address. I never knew that. And, he, was, and he, was, he remembered our exact address. And this was more than 20 years later. And so he remem- remembered the address and remembered my oldest pretty sister and the pretty <laughs> girl across the street. <laughs> well, you know, and, and here, just for anybody young out there listening or watching, uh, 
I think the the lesson that can be gleaned is that you just don't know, especially in today's environment, the jobs that exist today, some are not even going to be around. And there are going to be jobs that are going to be there 20 years from now that we can't even imagine today. Correct. Correct. You know, when you, when you look at where we've come, I know for me, um, you know, working in the graphics industry as I did for many years, owning a business and all, some of the things that we did then as far as typesetting don't even exist any longer. And, and the way things <laughs> the way things are produced now where it's all, you know, computerized and you don't even have a press to speak of most times now where everything is downloaded, you know, from the computer right to the duplicator, if you will. Yeah, and that there were actually um, 20 years ago there was a, a poster by done by the Long Island Works Coalition uh, and it was a poster with with infants um, seven or eight infants mm-hmm. and, and it said something to the effect of uh, when they reach the, the appropriate age um, the jobs that they will fill don't, don't even exist. exist right yeah, now. It's true. and that was 20 years ago yeah. so and hasn't changed no hasn't changed you know one of the things I wanted to be sure to mention and maybe even more than once today is our CEO summit that's coming up and this is something that We've done in the past, we've kind of changed it up, but this, I feel, this is going to be June 13th, and we're doing it at Toro School of Law in CI in their uh, beautiful meeting room, Uh, but it's uh, focused on workforce retention and recruitment, but the thing that I want people to understand, and please come to it, first of all, it's free, uh, but it's a wonderful networking opportunity to, to meet some of the CEOs of some of the premier companies, you know, here in the town of Islip. True. So it's, it's the concept behind the CEO summit is it's by CEOs and for CEOs. So uh, we expect that uh, the the panel, the moderated panel, mm-hmm. you you and Mitch Pally from the Long Island Builders Institute are the uh, moderators, but that the panel, um, which is made up of four CEOs, uh, will have interesting things to say. In this case, about workforce development, both mm-hmm. the re- attraction and retention of employees, which I would like to get into much deeper. Sure, um, but um, um, we we. Expect that there will be CEOs in the audience learning about some of the strategies that those companies use to uh, to help attract and, and keep their employees. Uh, and we've, as you mentioned, we've done this about a number of different topics through mm-hmm. the years. We've had different formats. We try and freshen it up from time to time. Uh, but this year's topic is extremely important, um, as you as, as you and I have discussed. Uh, sure. Well, you know, running the business of the town, you know, and that is to a business. People tend to forget that sometimes. But workforce retention and development and recruitment are crucial. You know, you uh, need to employ whatever strategy you can to retain your employees because you train someone and, you know, a year or two later, they're gone. You're back to square one. Yes. So, um, you know, that from a practical point of view is so very important. Yeah. And from our perspective in the Office of Economic Development, um, I, I think we understand that what gets lost often on the part of the uh, general public when they discuss the kind of things that we do and and the role that the incentives that we provide for companies to build and, and grow here um, what gets lost in that conversation is the number one decision-making factor in every single mm-hmm. uh, business decision about where to locate their company or whether to expand their company in their current location, whether to move someplace else or expand someplace else. The number one location factor is always about, can I hire the people with exactly. the skill sets that I need? Yeah. That's, and, and everything else becomes secondary, yep. secondary yep. to that. So with that, we're going to take a little bit of a break, but we're going to come back to that because it really, really is so important. So we'll be back with Bill Mannix from Economic Development here at Supervisor Spotlight.
We are back here in the studio of Long Island News Radio here at the airport with Bill Mannix, who is the Director of Economic Development for us at the town of Islip. And we're talking before we took the break about the CEO Summit, and we're going to keep going on that because it, it really, first of all, it's a great opportunity uh, for people to come, network. Uh, it's always fresh. You know, we have different topics every year, different formats that we've seen over the years, different participants over the years, but it's very interactive, uh, question and answer time. You know, you really get some good, meaningful questions and a lot of information. So um, again, as Bill was saying earlier, workforce retention and how important it is to know that you've got employees at the ready. It is. And, and, and a number of our companies, uh, and we're going to hear from them, so I don't want to tip anything off. We're no, gonna, you'll have we're to come. Hear, yeah, you'll Go have to, to come the website to hear and any register. of the strategies. But a number of, co- of, of our companies do uh, different things to, to attract um, um, employees. Uh, we heard in previous years, just uh, when it wasn't the focus of our discussion about companies that do uh, in-house training programs, in-house apprenticeship programs, uh, and others who use um, um, strategies to locate remote employees. So uh, we really expect to to have a Mm -hmm. wide array of of strategies that are going to be unveiled. Uh, but you'll have to come to, uh, you have to register. All right. So anyone who's out there listening or watching and wants to come, I said earlier it was for free, but you should register. Yes. Yes. We'd love you to pre-register. Uh, you can you can do so on our website, www.islipida.com. Uh, the the, um, the website should prompt you to where to go to register for the CEO Summit. it only take 30 seconds or less uh, mm-hmm. to do so. And if you didn't get that address, just go to Town of Islip and it'll event- you'll, you'll eventually get there. Essentially, it's islipida.com. Yeah, yeah. But um, so again, try to register uh, ahead of time. If for no other reason, when you come in, your badge will be there so everyone will know who they're talking to when you're walking around and, and networking because there really is... Uh, a little bit of a networking time before the program begins. And uh, don't discount the importance of that. That is so very important. I've learned that over the years, you know, uh, just meeting someone in a different venue and, oh, what do you do? And, oh, really? You know, and you you see it happening in front of your eyes, and it's great. I love that. I I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our sponsor for the event um, is City National Bank, and we're very thankful for for City National's response to us, they were eager to uh, to do so. So, well, it's I an opportunity th- for City National Bank to get themselves yes. out there, and uh, you know who knows. Yes, so I especially want to thank them and and Davy Sir. I, I'm not even going to attempt her last name. Okay, Serpolis, I believe it is. Okay, but, uh, well, she'll be there. <laughs> yes, she'll be there. But um, so the topics, as we said, are retention, recruitment. Uh, the fact that uh, businesses and expanding and uh, citing themselves here are looking at the workforce. And yes. uh, we do have an incredible workforce here we on do. Long Island. I, I mean, it's, it, 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 we, I think we tend to beat ourselves up a lot in mm-hmm. terms of the high cost of operating a business in this area and, and taxes. And you hear those things um, constantly, the drumbeat of the negative things about doing business on Long Island, but we're, the economy is doing very, very well. So we must be doing something well. And well, the really, unemployment figures, unemployment figures are that. low. The, the, um, real estate, all the real estate indicators are, are, are showing that, um, the, the, uh, the economy is very hot. Uh, and we're, we're seeing that in our deal flow through the industrial development agency, our principal tool of, of helping companies to grow and, and locate here. Um, but the thing that we do well, the thing, there are a number of things that, that we have that other locations don't have, but principally it revolves around talent, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and keeping and, and attracting that talent is extremely important. There is a skills gap. Yeah. There's a skills gap across the country. And it's especially true here on Long Island, um, where we've identified that a number of different, uh, skills that are needed, uh, by companies, there are no, or there are fewer than they would really like candidates to to 
um, fill those jobs that they have. So while you have this low unemployment, un- unemployment rate, you also have some unfilled positions. And what's really needed is for uh, people to enroll themselves in classes, in, in um, training programs uh, for the skill sets that our employers actually need. So um, to that point, I do think that the fact that we are so populated as a region, you know, 3 million people between Nassau and Suffolk counties, uh, the educational institutions that we have in place are, you know, top notch. Yes. And also to the awareness of the fact that not everyone is going to go to college. There are other skill sets or even at college, there are certain areas of discipline that we may need to focus attention on. Groups like the LIA, the HIA, uh, the groups that are out there are focusing on these issues and working with the businesses, certainly uh, the unions, uh, organized labor, they are very actively engaged in apprenticeship programs and trying to train, you know, employees. And uh, I think that is what sets us apart and makes us, you know, so good in that employee area. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you mentioned the labor unions, they have fantastic apprenticeship programs, uh, which uh, lead to high paying jobs. Yes. And for those who maybe do not want to pursue a four year college career, that's a great path for them. In addition, uh, there are manufacturers all across Long Island that have very, very uh, good career paths mm-hmm. uh, that lead to sustainable um, careers. Uh, where a four-year degree is not essential, um, and that role, the, the the role that our community colleges play in preparing that workforce is extremely important. Mm-hmm. We have a great relationship with the folks over at Suffolk Community oh, College. We do. Yes, uh, they do. They do great work over there, and they they help to fill that skills gap uh, by training and educating. So with training programs or programs or, or a degree program, uh, it leads to a, 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 a two-year degree. Uh, they provide some of the skills for good jobs and not your mother and father's old factory jobs, but almost all mm-hmm. industrial jobs now require some sort of computer skills um, even down to what you might call heavy machining. Uh, so these are very different jobs than what you might think about that occurs inside the four walls of a of an industrial factory. Well, you know, I think automotive technology is a perfect case in point. And I've seen the program at Suffolk Community College uh, run by, you know, an industry giant in the automotive field. Uh, but you walk in there and you're, you, it's computers, you know, from wall to wall practically. And yeah. this is the, it's, it's not the grease monkey or whatever the term was for someone that worked in that industry before. Yeah. So every manuf- every I, I, we visit in my office, we visit manufacturing companies all the time and we're on the manufacturing floor and every single machine has a computer mm-hmm. that runs the machine. So you are, the, the, the ability, the, the skill set that's needed by the people who run those machines is much higher, right. it's a much higher function than what it used to be. And in addition to the community college recognizing that and having many programs uh, that are a departure from the normal academic discipline, if you will, whether it's the HVAC, uh, HVAC program at Suffolk Community College, there's welding. light manufacturing, welding, automotive technology, but we also have BOCES, and they are really doing a fine job. And, and we at the town, you know, are partnering with Eastern Suff- Suffolk BOCES uh, to, you know, make ourselves available to future generations of employees that are coming from BOCES right into the workforce, and it's working really, really well. Yes, yes. So guess what? We have to take another break, and uh, we will be back with more really great information from our economic development guru, uh, Bill Mannix. Thank you. We are 
back here with Supervisor Spotlight. I'm Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor, and uh, delighted to have with us today Bill Mannix on our uh, Supervisor Spotlight. Uh, just want to get that plug in for the airport when we talk about economic development and, and what lures people to a particular location. Critical. Being in close proximity to Long Island McGuire Airport is huge for a lot of these businesses we can see out the window here. Uh, that Critical to our business. Absolutely. Uh, business here. They, they, it opens up markets for them that, mm-hmm. that don't exist uh, on, unless they can get uh, flights to those cities where they do business. Uh, we we hear from our business community all the time what a gem MacArthur Airport uh, is and could be if it if if the the uh, additional airlines come in yeah. and I know how hard uh, Shelly and her team has been working here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's certainly been a passion for both of us in yes. working on that. But you know, something that we have to remember too, uh, in addition to the commercial flights, we have general aviation here. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flights, you know, go in and out of here uh, in corporate jets, you know. So having that availability here, you know, you and I are not flying off in a corporate jet, but many of these, you know, CEOs <laughs> are and have their planes based here at Long, yes. Long Island MacArthur Airport. And that, too, is important to the regional uh, benefit that this particular facility, yeah. you know, brings to us here yeah. on Long Island. And it kind of segues into something that I wanted to talk sure. about, which is that um, the Veterans Highway corridor right around the airport is the um, central location of the aerospace cluster mm-hmm. that Long Island has. It's actually uh, the Long Island Forum for Technology a number of years ago did a study about the aerospace cluster and found that the greatest concentration of generally small companies working in aerospace exists right here in the Veterans Highway Corridor. So you're talking about Bohemia, uh, Ronkonkoma, Holbrook. Uh, and we see evidence of that all the time in in the, the kind of the response we have um, with aerospace companies who are always looking, it, it seems to us, always looking to expand and grow mm-hmm. uh, their sales. So, well, we've seen that firsthand with uh, you know East West Industries uh, in a beautiful stone's new throw corporate, from the airport, right? It started in a garage, yeah, you know, yeah. in Nassau County, and and here they are growing, uh, you know, dramatically, and uh, many many more like that. Yes. Um, I'm, I mean, I always say people would be surprised um, by what is actually made here. And when we're thinking about uh, the aerospace industry, you mentioned East West. Mm-hmm. They make critical safety uh, equipment that's on military aircraft. Mm-hmm. So they help keep pilots and crew safe in the event of uh, god forbid some yeah. some um emergency so they their principal product is a, is a seat uh that keeps uh, people on an aircraft safe and in, in in case there's a hard or hope, hopefully not a crash landing mm-hmm. but there are other products other safety related products that they make um but It it runs the gamut. Uh, We have companies that are assembling the major parts uh, of an aircraft. Uh, CPI Aerostructures Mm -hmm. in in Brentwood comes to mind. Uh, And then right close by to here, um, which I'm sorry, they keep changing their names a lot. I still refer to them as BE Aerospace, but it's now uh, Rockwell. Um, Rockwell Collins, now Rockwell. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And they make all of the lighting systems inside the interior of a commercial aircraft. So And all of this is happening right here. Yeah. You know, right. in our own backyard. In that case, right in Bohemia. Yep. Uh, great company. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've worked with them uh, for a number of years uh, and they're continuously expanding. Uh, and um, we're we're banking on the fact that they're gonna expand again in the future. Good. Well there are other clusters besides the aeros- aerospace that we have here. Do you want to yes. share? I mean, yes. I, I see I mean, it from, the hottest, from being a member of the board, but uh, it, it's amazing to yes, me. The, really. the hottest one right now is is uh, the pharmaceutical industry, mm-hmm. pharmaceutical slash nutraceutical. Nutraceuticals refers to a vitamin mm-hmm. and supplement manufacturers. Right. We've had a long relationship uh, with that 
portion mm-hmm. of the um, of the pharmaceutical industry, the nutraceuticals, in that uh, nature's bounty, uh, which is the world's leading manufacturer in supplements and vitamins, mm-hmm. uh, has been located in Islip since somewhere around the mid '80s. Before I was, I can't take credit for yeah. for attracting them but here. Th- so that's remarkable. I mean, you didn't say the the largest in the town, or the largest in the county, or the largest in the state or even the country, right. but worldwide, largest manufacturer. Right. And right they here. are headquartered here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are in, I believe it's 13 buildings in the town of Islip, but about a million and a half square feet, and over 2,000 employees here. So yeah. they are the largest manufacturer in the town of Islip, mm-hmm. as far as I know. Yeah. I've always called them that. I Hopefully I'm right on that. But, uh, uh, but they, just to give people an idea... When they first moved into the town, I've looked at the first application that they uh, uh, that they submitted to us, and they had 250 employees at the time. So the investment that Islip made in that company back in the 1980s has paid off more than tenfold, well, around tenfold. Mm-hmm. They have 2,000 em- employees now. And, and I think it's important. You said the right word to me anyway, the investment. Yes. And that's an important component of what... You do every day what economic economic development does, what the IDA does in offering, you know, incentives. It's an investment. It's an investment in getting these companies to grow, to come here, to stay here, uh, to keep people gainfully employed so that they can, you know, expand their homes. I mean, it's it's not just that, but everything that comes off of that. Yeah, the economic spinoff that comes Mm -hmm. off of it. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention... The, the more recent um, investment that we made in a uh, pharmaceutical manufacturer making generic pharmaceuticals, mm-hmm. um, a, a company by the name of Invagen, mm-hmm. uh, and that was maybe somewhere around seven or eight years ago. Uh, they took a an existing building in Central Islip, in what we call Tech Park in Central Islip, uh, and it's about 245,000 square feet. And that investment has led to spinoff companies now uh, that occupy, currently occupy an additional uh, 340,000 square feet in two separate buildings in that park. And we're about ready to, um, to see an, an, a, another building uh, constructed by that company, assuming that the Mm-hmm. Property that they're looking to purchase and build on is available. Uh, is well, it's available. They're in okay. contract. Assuming okay. assuming that that all that contract uh, is finally consummated, uh, but that's just uh, that's an example uh, again of that term investment. We attracted the one company in an existing building, uh, but from that has now stemmed additional economic activity, and all of that all of that has resulted in additional tax money, property tax money flowing through to the mm-hmm. town of ISO. All of the property that we're speaking of in was Central it? ISO yeah. was off the taxable off rolls the taxable. owned by either the town or the college. Uh, and now now we are putting it to good use, productive use, great manufacturing um, operations going on there, uh, good paying jobs. And uh, building the tax base, and, which you need to do right. because everyone... Knows that the cost of living here is high, the taxes are high. No one wants their taxes raised, and the only way out of it is to grow the base. Yes, is to grow the base. You know, where we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to put a plug in one more time for the CEO summit, uh, June thirteenth. Uh, go to the website, register, free refreshments. You know, have a nice uh, little continental breakfast, and meet some of the most incredible business leaders on Long Island in a very uh, lovely environment. Yes. And and I know I'm going to miss a name, but I'm going to say we're we're going to have very different companies. We're we're going to have aerospace companies there. We're going to have a we're going to have a, a service company, the largest trans, uh, Suffolk Transportation Service, largest uh, uh, such company on yeah. Long Island. Uh, and a, an expert in workforce. And but they're going to have to come. Yes. They're going to have to come in here. And we thank you so much for uh, watching, listening. Bill, thank you so much for coming in. I know uh, there's a lot going on in the town, and we're both going to run back there. But uh, again, thank you for watching Supervisor Spotlight. Mm-hmm.